When the prime time of mushroom foraging is over, what can one do? Grow some at home, of course. In this video, I am testing out 10 mushroom kits and logs, including three types of oyster mushrooms, lion's mane, and more. Yes, they are all edible. Ready or not, let's have some fun, guys. Get it? Fun guys sound like fungi? Long live the pun. Hello darlings, greetings from Washington State. It is late December as I filmed this and we just had our first snow tonight. Many months ago, I was at Pike Place Market and I picked up three logs. Now this first small log, this one is gonna grow shiitake mushrooms. They drilled holes and um, inoculated it. We have instructions here and it says this log is from Mont Rainier. And this log will produce oyster mushrooms third one is lion's mane, the smart mushroom. I'm most excited about the lion's mane. Have you guys seen photos of a fully grown lion's mane? It looks amazing. So after I got these three logs, I started to wonder, hmm, what if I grow other types of kits at the same time? So I got um, two more kits, North Spore, and this is another Lion's Mane Mushroom Kit. And this one's um, by Back to the Roots. So uh, after I got those kits, I started to look into other species of mushroom. So I ended up getting these guys, which I also got a couple months ago. This one's by Forest Origins. This one grows pink oyster mushrooms. Here is the brown oyster mushrooms and the white oyster mushrooms. So after getting these three, you know what happened? I ordered more! <laughs> you know that term, crazy cat lady? I admit, I'm the crazy mushroom lady. And it's my first time growing mushrooms at my home. So I'm like going from zero to like 300 miles per hour right now. So the last two kits I got is really interesting. This one is the Cordyceps militaris. And this one is not like the rest. It is reishi. Ooh, look at this! This is the reishi grow kit. So yeah, I was wondering like, where should I put these in the house? And then I realized I have 10 kits and it's probably not a good idea to grow them all in the same place because they drop spores. Even though these are edible and these are healthy, even healthy things could not be healthy if you get it in too much doses. So I contacted com some companies, two companies, and I asked them, uh, is it okay if I grow 10 kits all in the same place? Um, one of them was like, well, I don't know if that's healthy, you should ask a doctor. And then the other person was saying, we don't recommend that. Please don't put them in your bedroom. Maybe one kit is okay to put in your bedroom, but don't put 10 kits. That's just too much fungi power. So which of you guys shall we start first? North Spore Lion's Mane. Uh-oh. I hope it didn't go bad. Oh, it's been a while I got this. It doesn't look so good. But maybe it's supposed to look like that. I don't know. We'll try it and see what happens. I mean, I don't see anything on here that says you need to start watering them immediately. So if you're wondering what's inside this bag, it says um, there is sawdust completely colonized with mushroom mycelium. So this will be my pet for the next month or so. You gotta feed it. That kit is ready to go. Now let's work on the next one. So these triplets, I put them on a plastic tray and then we have to put X's on these. So it says to lightly scratch the surface. Now onto the third bag. Scratch it again, lightly. And next up, we're gonna wake them up by adding two tablespoons of water. So now we're gonna place the kit in a shady area that gets natural light, but never expose the kit to direct sunlight. Okay, so I didn't wanna keep these in any bedroom or bathroom. So I think this might be a good place to put it. Now for the reishi growing kit, it looks very similar. You know, it's in a clear bag, but the instructions are a bit different. This one we're gonna cut right under the plastic ties. I do this, it looks like. Keep the log temperature between 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And usually it needs about two months to finish the growth. 
So for the next one, we are going to inoculate ourselves. Now these um, logs, the small ones, these come inoculated. But in this case, we get to inoculate. Whoa, that looks like rice. Huh. Step one, place everything in the kit on a clean table. Remove the tip from the syringe. All right, so inside the syringe, there is liquidy stuff. I see some stuff floating in there. Okay, so this is the needle. Needles make me very nervous. Okay, remove the tip from the syringe. Quickly screw the cap to needle onto it. Did I do it? I think it's in. Hmm, I think it's in. Okay, perfect. Wipe the rubber stopper. Okay, so here we have the rubber stopper. So the company that made this kit, they're located in Washington. So we're supporting local businesses by ordering this kit. Remove the needle cap and quickly inject all of the liquid mycelium. Oh, it's liquid mycelium. Okay, let's do this. Ah, needle. Cute. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna push this down and then rotate like this. Ooh. Oh, it sprays out pretty fast. Oh, did I get that area? Okay, hold on. It's like a little game. Oh, I ran out already. That was fast. Place the container in a totally dark place at room temperature. I guess I put it in a closet? I do open my closet doors, so that's gonna let light in. So I'm gonna put this in a box. And let's put the box in there. Make sure we kind of close it tightly so light doesn't get in. I'll see ya in seven to nine days. I was just about to head to bed because I'm sleepy, but I realized, oh, I gotta soak the mushrooms. I gotta bathe them. Well, not the mushrooms. I mean the logs and one of the bags. So I'm gonna set these guys in a pan. Oh, they're floating. So we need to put something over them to keep them submerged fully. I'm gonna put another pan over them. So this weight will keep them down. <gasps> Once again, these ones we need to submerge in water every 30 to 45 days. When I was shaking off the water, I got a whiff of this smell and it's kind of like um, cheese, like stinky cheese. I gotta make sure the X is facing outwards. It's been four days since I started the mushroom kits and guess what happened? The white oyster mushroom kit, it already started sprouting these like little tiny dots. And on the side, I think this one already existed before we started watering them, but it got bigger. So it's like really bulging on the side of the plastic bag. So I was wondering, do we cut this area to help them pop out? I looked into Forest Origins FAQ list, uh, that's the company I bought it from, and here's the question. There are mushrooms growing on the side. Should I cut there? No, do not make any additional cuts. Making additional cuts can cause the mushroom kit to dry out. As for the reishi mushroom, we gotta see some condensation droplets right inside the tent. And I don't see anything, so we gotta spray the inside of that. 
and since reishi is a warm temperature mushroom, I'm thinking to keep it in my room. It's probably safe enough because the spores are going to be contained inside the tent. I'm going to put them on a bigger plate. Um, if this floor gets wet, it can damage it. So this way, any con condensation drops that go down to the plate, it has more surface. It's almost 11 p.m. The last time I showed you guys any mushrooms, it was a little over 12 hours ago. And guess what happened? Check out how much the white oyster mushrooms have grown. Before these three clusters, they had some space in between them, but now they're starting to join hands. I admit my trypophobia has been triggered, however, I can't stop looking at them. My pet mushrooms are growing into this world. Welcome, my dears, welcome. Merry Christmas! Look at how much they grew overnight. Wow, how exciting! <laughs> the caps, they're now um, getting to be bigger than my pinky fingernail. Pink oyster mushrooms are growing up as well. Oh, look at those beauties. As for the logs, no action yet. Look at those little guys starting to grow. Hello! It is 10.20 a.m. I'm gonna start a time lapse. It's my first time trying this, so let's hope it turns out amazing. I'm not sure how much my mushrooms will love or hate this light, but we'll give it a shot. So three, two, one, let's begin. Whoa, it's like watching a dehydrated sponge expand. On day 7, I made another time lapse. This time, the brown oyster mushrooms are in the spotlight. And they are ready to party! I didn't sleep well last night. I felt like things crawling on my skin and my skin felt a little bit itchy. I was thinking, maybe it's cause of the mushroom. Even though the reishi mushroom is tented, maybe something is coming out of it is causing me, my body, to react. So I'm gonna move this back outside of my bedroom. That solved it. Didn't feel the crawlies anymore while sleeping. Day 9 of this magical mushroom journey, and the pink oyster mushrooms are the superstars. It's been 7 days since the Cordyceps militaris has been sitting in my closet. Let's check. Remember, we had brown rice in there, but now a lot of the surface is covered in white. It looks like mold, but it is mycelium, if all things are going as planned. And now we could place the container in indirect sunlight from a window, or cool white uh, LED, or cool white fluorescent lights. For now, let's put it in the closet where we're doing the time lapse, because we got this nice lighting. And while we're in here, Let's give the brown oyster mushrooms a mist. I love watching these time lapses on replay while looking at one mushroom per round. The ones above expand, the ones below shrivel. Ah, let's take a moment and admire how beautifully big these mushrooms have grown. Look at this, this biggest one. Wow, if I put my hand over it, it goes from my thumb to the side of my pinky. Very big! <laughs> I want to briefly talk about the smell. Each of them have a different fragrance. The white oyster mushroom. Now if you smell the bag, it's going to be a little different. The bag can smell very pungent, especially if there's like um, old water seeping out. So you gotta make sure you smell the mushroom, not this area. It smells fresh, it smells wet. It smells like a plant. But remember, this is fungi, not a plant. The brown oyster mushrooms, the white one smells a little bit more sharp. Now the pink oyster mushroom, this smells the strongest. It smells a little musky. 
Of the three, the brown oyster mushroom smells the most pleasant. Mamio, how does this smell to you? How can you describe it? It is like forest and some cookie. Cookie? Yeah, some cookie. What kind of cookie? A uh, sugar cookie. I'm gonna treat these guys to a very basic, simple recipe. Just gonna cut some garlic, add some oil or ghee, some salt, a little bit of pepper. I just wanna really feel these mushrooms before I add it into food. To harvest, we have to grab as close to the stem and uh, twist them at the stem. Wow! So now we have an island of mushrooms and here's what it looks like on the block. Oh, we could probably peel this one off as well. Yeah, let's take that out. Later, we'll use this to grow more mushrooms. I love gently petting the gills. It feels soothing. This is so big, I can't even wrap my whole hand around it. I'm trying to get to the edge of the flock. Okay, I think I got a grip. Wow! Woo! It's pretty heavy. Here's what it looks like from the bottom. So beautiful. Ah, I can't wait to eat it. Just cutting off the substrate. Just gonna peel it in half by hand. That was the biggest one of them all. And now we wait for them to cool down a bit and we shall dig our teeth in. Guys, I'm so excited for this. Excited! <laughs> Mommy was gonna try it with us. <laughs> wow! I only put garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper. Mm. What we're yeah. tasting is the mushroom. Mm. The mushroom is speaking to us. Yeah, mushroom is uh, speaking to me. Don't need me. <laughs> but I said, no, you are too tasty. <laughs> mm. So tasty. Wow. Savory. Mm. You know, a mushroom. I have to say this. <laughs> the best. Mm. It's quite chewy. Deliciously chewy. Really good. You know how potato chips, they're savory and addicting? It has that quality to it. Brown oyster mushrooms, I'm just gonna peel it with my hand. Oh, they just come right off so easily. Normally when I cook and eat mushrooms, I think, oh, this is gonna be yummy. But these guys, because I grew them myself, and I feel like I bonded with these fungi. I was practically babysitting them throughout the day. When we were doing the time lapse, I constantly checked in on them every couple hours, misting them, making sure they don't dry out. Mommy, oh, what do you think? Let's try it together. <laughs> Different texture, juicier. The white oyster mushroom, that one tasted more like potato chips. It is good, but the first one is better for me. Why is that? That has more flavor, something more. I like them both. I mean, 
they're like my kids, you know, I raised them. <laughs> they're both my favorites. So we are eating your kids? Oh my god. <laughs> it's very good. So you're gonna cook one more? Now I'm gonna do the pink oyster mushroom next. Quite thick. That was a pretty clean break. Here's the bottom, and you see the shape of the substrate, a rounded square. Let's remove the substrate. Oh, it's not cutting through as easily. <sighs> okay, hold on. I'm gonna quarter this first, and then cut it off. On the outside, they look like flower petals, but in the inside, you see, they are long. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. shrank so much mm. <laughs> mm, the piece I got mm. is incredibly chewy so the brown oyster mushroom mm. the stem is more moist because it's thicker this one the stem is not as moist but the petals mm. are moist mm. like the top part do you think this is chewier than the last one? Yeah, you know, mushrooms taste like meat in a way, right? Or some scallops. That's the thing, when I was eating these mushrooms, there are moments I'm like, why do I keep thinking about seafood? Mm. I'm gonna try a brown oyster mushroom again. It also reminds me of a squid. It's a little chewy. Wow. All right, that is for tomorrow. Mamiyo said we could add those to a dish. What dishes are you thinking about adding those to? You know what? We can make japchae without beef. Usually we put beef. We can make uh, mushroom japchae. You know, the Korean glass noodles. Mm -hmm. Mamiyo put the leftover mushrooms into japchae. So the Forest Origins Grow Kit, those grew the fastest. The other guys, um, they're still taking a bit more time. The lion's mane is making progress. Uh, still yet to see pinning on this guy. Just about to head to bed and I remembered. In preparation for the second harvest, we must submerge it into two inches of water. We gotta gently scrape the top and remove any stems, like this right here, we're gonna move that one. And then we're gonna poke the cleaned area with the fork, making about a, a inch deep X. We're going to keep them submerged for three days. If I'm counting correctly, it's been 17 days since we started growing mushrooms. Let's look inside. So once they start pinning, we will remove the towel off and start watering them directly. No pinning just yet, but ooh, it is smelly. That's the pink oyster mushroom. Now what's this one? Ooh, that looks moldy. Hmm. So that's the white oyster mushroom. Let's see how the brown oyster mushrooms are doing. Whoa! So much pinning! That looks so intense. 
Okay, so before the first harvest, when they were pinning, they were just like a couple patches, but this one, there's so many patches next to each other. So this one we can uncover now. As for the reishi mushroom, look at the top. We have bumps. And this bump somehow punched out through the plastic. And the bumps are growing tall. You see that one? What I've been doing is I take the tent, I spray it a couple times, I rotate it, let it sit so the mist settles inside, and then I put it over the reishi. As for the Cordyceps militaris, it is all orange in there. The other oyster mushrooms are not doing so well. It looks like they were pinning, but then it got moldy. So over here, you see, it became uh, kind of green. As for the lion's mane, we got some nice volumes. However, they didn't grow big enough where, you know, it gets very hairy like a lion's mane. It says to harvest when the mushroom forms visible teeth and before it starts to yellow. From what I see, there are no visible teeth. However, they are yellowing. So I guess it's time to eat them. Cute. It reminds me of cauliflower. Taking a closer look inside the grow kit, look, these are the baby mushrooms getting ready to pop out. I'm going to cook the lion's mane the same way as the other mushrooms. Garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper, keep it real simple. I really want to feel the lion's mane and taste the difference. Let's cut off the substrate. Oh, this smells like a very familiar mushroom. The one they sell in grocery shops. Like the um, ones they put in uh, salads. <gasps> I see some teeth growing on the smaller bunch of mushroom. There are some parts of the lion's mane, it looks like coral reef. So it turns out Mamio used all the regular garlic to make kimchi. All we have left is the huge elephant. <laughs> garlic. This is one clove, okay? It like fits in my palm. I'm not gonna use this whole thing. I'm, I'm just gonna use a portion of it. If I use this whole clove, I mean, that's like the size of the biggest lion's mane we have here. All right, now I'm gonna peel these apart by hand. The cross section is fantastic. If you look on the outside, it looks like spherical and it looks like a solid thing. But when you see the inside, you see the teeth. Wow, cool. When you push down on it, it's cushiony, kind of like the bottom of sneakers. It's a firm bouncy. The parts that are very yellow, I think I'm just gonna take that part off. It does feel a bit different compared to the more white, fresh part. Is it just me or does it kind of look like chicken? All right, I'm waiting for it to cool down before we invite Mamio to try it with us. Have you ever tried lion's mane mushroom before? <laughs> try? I never heard about the mushroom's name either. <laughs> but it smells so good. I'm super thrilled about this. Ever since I started getting into mushrooms and learning about them, the minute I saw the photo of the lion's mane, I was like, whoa, I gotta try that. But I never saw it out in nature. So being able to grow it at home and trying it at home, it is an honor. All right, I'm gonna grab it with my finger. Mmm, very moist. Did I cook it thoroughly? Yeah. It's so moist. Mm -hmm. It is chewy when you first bite into it, but it's not nearly as chewy as the oyster mushrooms. With the moisture mushrooms, I was able to strip them by hand more evenly, um, but these ones, like, it's a spherical uh, mushroom, so it's harder for me to like peel it evenly. So that's why like some parts, it's like super juicy, 
and other parts is a little bit more like the oyster mushrooms. That is delicious. Mm -hmm. So it's all gone now? I'm gonna try to do a second harvest. How do we describe this flavor though? I, I really want to let the viewers feel it through us. I mean, yeah, it's savory. There's only so many words to say savory, right? You know the texture of this? It's a little bit like a fatty chicken. Or even kind of like the fatty part of pork belly with bits of chewiness. How do you describe it? If I compare the mushrooms we tried to beef steak, uh, oyster mushrooms are New York steak. This is Wagyu steak. You like it? <laughs> my comparison, you like my comparison? Do you agree with me? Yeah. Taste-wise, this is the king of mushrooms. <laughs> right? Well, there's other types of mushrooms we've yet to try. So before we say king of mushrooms, we must try some more and decide who will take the throne. But so far, this takes the throne. Mm. What's interesting about mushrooms is they can taste very meaty, the texture and the flavor. Although I hear a lot of people categorize mushrooms as vegetables, mushrooms are actually fungi, and fungi are closer to animals, to us, than to plants. So maybe that's why it makes sense that they're more meaty than planty. I know there are some other mushrooms who are waiting for them to grow and for us to harvest but you know the logs, those might take a couple more months mm -hmm. and this video, I already started editing it and it's about 30 minutes long mm -hmm. so I'm going to go ahead and share this with you guys I'm not a mushroom expert but I love yeah. exploring this world and uh, trying these mushrooms, like growing it at home and trying it it's a fun journey. Although, you know, like we're not traveling abroad or anything, um, sometimes you could have adventures in your home. And those adventures can take place in a very small block. Mina, you might not be mushroom expert, but I know you are mur mushroom cultivator. <laughs> <laughs> mushroom, mushroom enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a joke you're referring to from a, a Korean drama mm -hmm. crash landing on you mm -hmm. the uh, tomato cultivator when yeah. the main character is playing a game online Com yeah <laughs> username I'm gonna make a sequel to this video I think let me know your thoughts in the comment section and uh, if you want to see more of these kind of videos uh, I for sure will be growing some more mushrooms at home and uh, if you guys want to know more I'm happy to share bye bye See you in the next one! During a very rainy nature walk, I passed by many fallen logs covered in moss. But this one log had extra magic on it. There were some flappy looking things popping out. Can you guess what they are? I think they're oyster mushrooms. Not too far away, there was a mossy stump with three mushrooms. Aren't they just lovely? This patch of witch's butter absorbed so much water, it's become blob-like. Thanks Mother Nature for your wonders, and thank you guys for watching my video. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. Toodles, my noodles! After December is over, my Christmas tree, I'm not gonna toss it out. I'm going to grow mushrooms on it. So dear Christmas tree, we'll be together forever. <laughs> So these three logs, each is labeled on the bottom. So O stands for oyster mushroom, uh, L stands for lion's mane, and S is shiitake. Check out how much the white oyster mushrooms have grown. The other mushroom kits are lagging behind. But you know what? This is so symbolic of life. Think of each of these mushroom kits as a person. This is one person, another person, and yet another person. And maybe you could even see each kit as a dream. Whether it be humans or dreams, not everything blossoms at the same time. Some of us may reach our goals, our dreams at an earlier time in life, while others it takes an extra decade or two or three. It could take a really long time for us to blossom into the full human being we always wanted to be. And sometimes, let's say a group of five individuals, they put the same amount of effort but not all their dreams, not all their rewards come to fruition at the same time. So just like these mushroom kits, 
I'm excited for the one that has already starting to blossom. But the other mushroom kids, I believe in them. Yeah, they're taking a little bit more time, but that's fine. And no matter what the speed they grow, I will continue to nurture them twice a day, give them those sprays. So for each of us and for all our dreams, don't give up. Keep on nurturing. Keep on giving that love. Even if it's a couple of sprays here and there, little bit by little bit, something's gonna grow. Something's gonna blossom. The white oyster mushrooms are more than ready to eat. There are so many smaller mushrooms that are trying to grow, but I think uh, the bigger mushrooms were taking the nutrients and there just wasn't enough water. Like I tried to spray extra on the bottom, but I guess um, the bigger ones were sucking up the water, the moisture. The pink oyster mushrooms also look very ready to eat. The reason why these edges look a bit dry is because, well, I dropped it the other day by accident and um, it bruised them. And I think the water's not getting to those edges anymore. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Get better. Unsalted mixed nuts jar, but there's kimchi in it. Those gentle, moist, peeling sounds, isn't it calming? Oh, I bet you can make an ASMR video dedicated just to peeling mushrooms. You need a lot of mushrooms though, I think.